Ink Ribbon. Resident Evil Outbreak introduced us to some of the civilians of Raccoon City, and I thought it would be fun to cover them. So it shouldn't be a surprise that I'd start with the capable waitress. I dug deep to find everything I could, and I hope you enjoy it. So without further delay, from beef with David to a raccoon obsession, here are 25 facts about Cindy Lennox. Cindy has the second slowest virus meter, beaten only by Yoko, and in order to reach 100% infection without taking any damage, it takes Cindy 1 hour and 52 minutes. She knows most of the characters in Outbreak already, even some NPCs, due to the simple fact that all of them were frequent customers at Jay's bar where she worked. Cindy is one of the easiest characters to achieve both no damage and no weapon bonuses thanks to her special crouch ability. While using it, she will duck down and be temporarily invincible. So with the right timing, she can easily avoid damage. On top of this, the other AI characters tend to protect her more. In the Wild Things scenario, there's a file that can only be found by Cindy, which is a recipe for an herb pie. Interestingly, the recipe includes a full list of ingredients, and I'm very tempted to try to cook it and see how it turns out, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that video. In Resident Evil Outbreak, there is a hidden relationship system, with each character having two characters they are friends with, and one that they do not get along with. For Cindy, her friends are George and Kevin, and the character she doesn't get along with is David. Cindy's special item is an herb case, which serves as a separate inventory but can only hold herbs, holding a maximum of three of each as well as an extra slot for mixed herbs. You can either use them to heal your partners or use them on yourself. As an AI partner, Cindy will heal the player only two times per scenario. She will also use blue herbs on the player twice if they are poisoned. Unfortunately, she doesn't use her herb case as an AI, probably because the player wouldn't have access to the herbs inside. In File 2, Cindy was given the Bandage special item, which prevents bleeding from happening as long as it's in your inventory, and it can be transferred to your teammates as well. On top of this, if your teammates are bleeding, shouldering them will also remove their bleed status, making it very useful. Cindy's exclusive SP items give a bit of insight into her life, the ones in the Outbreak scenario reveal that she really didn't like her boss because not only was he embezzling money, but also, in her words, a perv. Cindy has two different voice actors for each game. First was Julie Maddalena, who has done a ton of voice work including Mitzi in the Foo's dub of Shin-chan, Atachikoma in Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, Rebecca Steam in Monster High, and even Pinky the Ghost in Pac-Man. In File 2, she was voiced by Michelle Ruff, who has an even more extensive resume of voice acting, including C. Viper in the Street Fighter series, Rukia in Bleach, and in the Resident Evil series, she was the voice of Ronnie in Degeneration and Jill Valentine in both Operation Raccoon City and Revelations. Cindy absolutely loves the Raccoon Zoo mascot, Mr. Raccoon, constantly referring to him as cute, adorable, and darling, and she has several SP items related to him. She also has a picture of him on her work locker at Jay's bar. In the Decisions Decision scenario, if Cindy and George are alive at the end, but haven't used any of the daylight cures on themselves or have any left in their inventory, you are treated to a secret pair ending where they choose to stay behind since they know they're infected, and embrace each other as they watch the missiles head into Raccoon City and destroy it. Even though Cindy and George seem to have a close relationship, they actually have very different views. For example, in one of George's exclusive SP items, he refers to Mr. Raccoon as a sniveling brat. When the third Resident Evil live-action movie was being produced, there was an internet rumor that gained traction that Cindy would appear in the film as a character and be played by the professional wrestler Deborah Marshall. In the Hive scenario, you can get a submachine gun or burst handgun on hard and very hard difficulty, but only if you're playing as Kevin or Cindy. There's an injured officer on the roof that will give Cindy a gun after he mistakes her for someone else. As a bonus, only for Cindy, he will give her a box of ammo, regardless of difficulty. Cindy has four unlockable costumes. Her vacation costume is just a regular outfit consisting of a blue top and white pants, 
her funny bunny costume, which is pretty self-explanatory, her nightlife outfit, which is a full leather outfit worn with her hair down, and her coquette outfit, which is just a bikini top and short shorts. In one of the ending cutscenes, you can actually see Cindy in her vacation costume, though I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be Cindy or if it's just a case of reusing assets and hoping nobody will notice. Just like Jill and Billy, Cindy is able to play the piano, as demonstrated in the Decisions Decisions scenario. Cindy is the most religious character in the Resident Evil series. It's implied she frequently attended church before the outbreak happened. There's also the mention of church in a few ad-libs, as well as the description for the SP item, Sexy Lipstick. Her work uniform seems to be inspired by several American restaurant chain uniforms, but also very reminiscent of Jennifer Aniston's character in the movie Office Space. Cindy seems to be very much into skincare, as several of her SP items are things like lotions, creams, and makeup, and she seems to prefer ones that are plant-based or more natural, showing interest in the ingredients on the label. Cindy is a really big fan of herbs, not only with her use of them, but several SP items involving them, including a book on herb cultivation, which she uses frequently, herb tea, and even an antibacterial cream made with blue herbs. In the Wild Things scenario, if Cindy isn't in your party, she will appear as an NPC, but she will be killed by the elephant when it charges through the wall. She'll drop some herbs, and you can also find the SP item admission ticket on her body on all difficulties except for easy. Judging by Cindy's response to Will's death and eventual zombification, as well as his diary entries about her, it's implied that they had a close relationship in some capacity, whether it was just friendship or possibly more, with him mentioning her smile specifically in his diary. While on the subject of Will, he doesn't just work at the bar, but he also lives there, renting a room from his boss for a small fee. It's implied in the good epilogue in Outbreak File 2 that Cindy ended up buying a house and inviting George over, possibly ending up as a couple. Also, several different websites and sources say that she considered a new career in medicine and nursing after her experience, but I couldn't find any concrete proof of that. And thanks to File 3 never being completed, I suppose we will never really know. But at least Cindy made it out alive. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if I missed anything, please leave it down in the comments, and let me know which Outbreak character you'd like to see me cover next. If you learned something, then please smack that thick like button with an herb of your choice. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching, Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.